The following podcast is a Dear Media production. My dress keeps coming undone. <laughs> oh, I've done that. Three, I think this will be three times yeah, now. I'll, you know what? We're just going to let it fly. We're just going to be crazy. Why, yeah, why don't you tie it around and do a little bow at the front? That's not about it. No, that looks hideous. Okay, welcome back to probably a podcast. The back of my dress is undone. We're feeling freaky. So I brought my boyfriend on. Um, this God's is sake. <laughs> James Middleton joining us once again. Um, thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Have you had fun since you've been here? It's been wonderful. Really good. We got to celebrate Valentine's Day together, which was nice. It was our very first Valentine's Day. When you're in a long distance relationship, you have to do things like that, like fly out across the world for Valentine's Day. I kind of just worked out timing wise, but yeah. We... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, Valentine's no, Day too. I could have come on the 15th. That's true. Or you... 16th. You... Actually, I was going to come on the 18th. Yeah, that's right. Are you so... happy you had more time? So don't knock my efforts. No, I'm not knocking your efforts. And we did have a really, really delightful. Oh yeah, look. Oh, you can probably see them in here. The roses. What but... did you? What did, what did you get me? I got you a horse trough. <laughs> a literal horse trough to do your silly little ice bass. <laughs> no, take away the word silly. Okay, to do your ice bass in. Do oh, you produce in recording. You... Do you get the hype of the ice bass? She's shaking her head. No. It's not for everyone. It's not. One day you will come in there with me though. It's a pretty small horse trough. I feel like it could definitely room for two. Possibly be enough room. Um, no, Valentine's Day was nice. We actually opted to stay in. So nice. I lo- I've gone out for Valentine's Day, restaurants. I just, I never really loved the prefixed menu situation. I always just feel like when everyone is sitting around me, we're all dressed up and everyone's with their significant others and we're all just eating the same food. I'm like, I feel like I'm on a cruise. Yeah. You feel like you're in some sort of weird, like Truman show dating episode. Like everyone's like smiling at each other. Like, hi, we all know where they're Valentine's Day. I feel a bit like lame. <laughs> yeah, and it's not late because I've gone to a forum and like how nice it but... is quite fun though sometimes going and doing that because then you can just chat and talk about the other couples in the restaurant oh yeah you like, can be like, like oh, under. they look like they're on the verge of a breakup or... <laughs> I kind of do that anyways when I'm out to eat I'll be like do you think they're on a first date yeah you do that's interesting to me I'm a big I'm a big people watcher okay so I thought it would be fun um, oh you know what we can actually talk about this because by the time this episode comes out we'll have already done it so this weekend James and I are going to North Carolina, not South Carolina where I'm from, but North Carolina, even though my parents will be joining us, so that'll be nice, to judge Miss North Carolina USA, which is really cool. I mean, like, I was Miss South Carolina Teen USA when I was 17, and I've kept in contact with the RPM, which is like the production company that puts on the pageant, and I judged uh, Miss Alabama and Miss Louisiana in the past, like, four years. Um, Over the past four years, I've judged the most, so this was when they asked us both to do it. I was like, how cool. That is cool. I have no credentials to talk about in terms of my experience, just that this will be my first time. I know. I was like, he was like, what's it going to be like? I was like, you'll see. And he's like, what? I'm like, they'll explain everything to you. Everything will make sense. You'll get a big old, you get like a literal judge's, you'll love it. It's so much information to digest. It's like a judge's pamphlet. I don't love digesting information about stuff that... Handbook. That's what it is. You love a handbook. Do I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, All over the house, aren't they? My handbook. So there's my Amalfi Coast one. Oh, yeah, I do have a lot of books around the house, but they're mostly just for looks. Um, Okay, so that's what we're up to while he's here. And then just really kind of just doing regular things, trying to live life not on vacation mode when we're together, because I feel like a lot of the time when we hang out and we get asked this question a lot, like when we are together, does it feel like we're vacationing? Which sometimes, yeah, because we'll be in like beautiful places on vacation, essentially. But it's been nice to just like stay at the house, work, go on walks, go to the grocery store. I mean, things that we feel like we never get to do together is like grocery shop. Just that, sounds so we trivial. Keep, we keep telling everyone that's like our favorite thing to do. Everyone's like, are you, are you guys okay? <laughs> like, I, I think they're going downhill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Someone check on James and Shannon. Yeah. But well, I also think that people forget, like, I have a job as well. And so do you. So I actually have to work yeah. sometimes when I'm here. No, it's nice. And then Taylor had hope. Be, be. We will obviously have Taylor on to talk all about her home birth and everything of the sort. But we've just been kicking back and having fun and chilling. Oh, I took him to see the dirt, the lot. And that, that was nice. It was just, you know, dirt. But it was exciting. Big square block of dirt. Yeah, little Big. things like that. They are nice. And and I think important for us to do at this stage because imagine we did all this like nice fun stuff and then we got to eventually living together and we just couldn't stand each other like the little things that we did around the house. Yeah. Like you tooting in your sleep and stuff. I don't toot in my sleep. You woke me up tooting in your sleep. <laughs> You're literally such a liar. I, that is that is correct information. What? Okay, that, then you are too soft of a sleeper if a little baby No, toot. it happened to be just when I woke up because I was turning over and you just farted. I was like, for God's sake, what is she doing when I'm asleep? This is not factual information. This is fake news. 
Um, you'll be hearing it from my lawyers. Um, okay, so I thought it'd be fun. You know, sometimes I do uh, like advice columns, ask Shannon, or just like random things that I think are funny that you guys write in. So I thought we would get a little bit of a male perspective this go round and have you answer some of them as well. Yeah, I'm going to be as honest as I can as well. Would you normally not be? Depends on the audience. Oh, so he's a shapeshifter. No. I thought I was a people pleaser no, in this No, I mean, I'm not going to, what I mean by that is I'm not just going to say stuff for the sake of saying stuff. He's going to be brutally honest. I think that's I'll be brutally honest because I think that's what, what people need to hear from him I now, think, right? I think they want honesty mm. with proper delivery. I'm a good liar though as well. Okay. What? This is taking a turn. <laughs> for what? Yeah. Yeah. T- yeah. Don't worry about it. Okay. That. Let's see. We're going to start off with. How do you get your partner to stop making sarcastic remarks towards you? They're jokes, he says, but they really bother me. Okay, so if I was to be, if I was to put myself in that position and I was to be saying sarcastic things about you, I guess they're like things that are putting you down. Yeah, she's saying they're, he's saying them to her, but he's like, I'm just kidding. I personally think there's a grain of truth in every joke. Yeah. And like, I would be very offended if my partner did that to me and I would be really upset by it. And if he said, maybe what you can do is like not so aggressively, but if he says like, I'm just kidding, you can be like, they don't seem like jokes to me. You know what that is though? That's a sign of of, of, a, of a male, a male, a man, or or if, if it's the other way around, a woman not having the courage to just be very honest about things that maybe irritate the other person. Like if I'm constantly making snide remarks about stuff that you're doing, Yes, it's because I'm basically wanting to get across a message that I don't like what you're doing or it's making so me jealous. Passive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 pathetic. I've done stuff like that before, though, even though you're calling it pathetic. I've done that with, like, friends where you, like, feel awkward. So you're like, ha, 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 sure. I hate that. And you're like, they're like, ha, ha, ha. And you're like, no, seriously. I think it's one I'm thing kidding. doing it with your with your mates and doing your, you know, I, I do that sometimes with my mates. You know, you, you you take the piss, basically, and you say little things which are actually quite true, but you're just winding each other up. But if it's if it's something that's happening over and over again in a relationship, then then that's an issue. Yeah, so how would you suggest she brings that up that she doesn't want him to do that anymore? Just like, be, like, I think the, the number one solution to so many problems in a relationship is just people not being honest about how they feel. Like, just be honest. What's something she could say, though? Give me, like, give her, like, okay, a, script, so, a tiny script. Um, Hey, John, I feel like recently I've noticed that you're making a lot of snide remarks about things that I'm doing. You also, when you're saying this kind of thing, from my experiences, you want to make it about you. You don't want to say what they're doing wrong because then they'll just put up a defensive wall. Uh So you just say, some of the things that you've been saying are really upsetting me. And I know that they're coming across as jokes from your side, but, but they have an effect on me because I think that there's a deeper meaning behind them. Can you explain why you're constantly making these jokes? Yeah, you could take that approach, which is pretty formal. You could also say like, you could wait till he does it again, which I guess is shitty, but like wait till he does it again and be like, I feel like you're not kidding. And if he's like, no, of course I'm kidding. You could be like, no, I really feel like, like I've been wanting to talk to you about this. Like maybe so it's not, you don't have to build up so much courage to sit him down and talk. And it feels more like daunting. You could like wait till he does it again and then be like, I feel like you're not. And if he's like, of course I am, babe. I'm just messing with you. You could be like, I kind of want been wanting to talk about this. Like I, every time you do that and you say it's a joke, I feel like it's not a joke. And hurts my feel. And then and then say what you said. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, you don't, you don't need to, you don't need to package it up like a present, but but just. You need to get your honest feelings across. Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, what's a wanker? Are you serious? Yeah. You don't know what a wanker is? Uh, a, w- a wanker? No, like a fuckboy, I thought. <laughs> no, in England. Like your wanker? A wanker is just a... Is it a bad just, word? A wanker in England is basically just like a, an asshole. You wanker. A, a, but wanker means... Common football term, soccer term, sorry. Wanker means... Yeah, I'm a wanker. If you were masturbating, the, 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 you're the, the wanking. The technical term is I'm a wanker, I'm wanker. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I masturbate, right? But if you call it as an insult to someone, you're not saying you 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 old masturbate to you. You're, you're basically <laughs> saying like you're an asshole. Okay. You're an asshole. So would you would you interchange it with the way we say fuckboy? What would you call a fuckboy? A brav? No, just a fuckboy. You use fuckboy in England? Yeah. Okay. Pro- yeah, I'd say so. Uh, sleaze bag. No, fuck boy. Yeah. Oh, sleaze bag. It sounds like something my mom would say. <laughs> He's a sleaze bag. Well, I like your mom, so we, we got that in common. <laughs> okay. Brownie points. I don't even think she listens to this. One thing about me, I am absolutely not trying to go to the grocery store. Mostly because, like, why is it that you feel like you always run into everyone that you don't want to see when you're at the grocery store? You know what I mean? Like, hello, my ex-boyfriend and three different girls who hate me. 
Okay, but honestly, besides that point, it is just not convenient. I am totally team have your groceries delivered, especially because it cuts out all the unnecessary purchases that I tend to make when I'm scrolling aimlessly down the aisles. Also, grocery shopping hungry, all that is just, it's dicey. So my favorite thing to use is Thrive Market. I've been using them for years now and it's my favorite because it also ensures that I'm ordering healthy groceries. I'm also a huge snacker, so like if I'm gonna be snacking, I wanna be snacking healthy. There really are so many healthy alternatives to food that I've discovered while using Thrive's grocery subscription service. Some of my favorite brands they have are Amy's, their mac and cheese can do no wrong, Four Sigmatic, Primal Kitchen, The Honest Kitchen, and tons more. They also have way more than just food, by the way. They've got bath, body, beauty, all of it, delivered right to your door and with some serious savings. Now, me personally, I'm like a real visual kind of gal, so when I'm on Thrive Market's website, I love that they show you the amount you're saving on your groceries right there on the website. They even tell you the percentage off that it is. You really do get such better prices with Thrive than you would at any normal grocery store. My last order had a total savings summary of 34%. Like that's so much money off. They've also got a price match guarantee, which I love. You can curate your shopping experience too to your dietary preferences as well. So that saves so much time. If you only wanna see like gluten-free options, keto-friendly, non-toxic cleaning supplies, et cetera, Boom, just click of a button, enter that in, and it'll tailor the website pages to show you just that. My favorite, favorite thing about Thrive Market though, is knowing that when you join, you are helping a family in need with their one-for-one -one membership matching program. You join and they give someone who needs help the groceries to feed their families. I truly love when I see big businesses giving back like that, so Thrive Market, amazing amazing thing you're doing i also have a discount code for you guys of course join thrive market today and get 30 percent off your first order plus a free 60 dollars gift go to thrivemarket.com probably for 30 percent off your first order plus a free 60 dollars gift that's t-h-r-i-v-e market.com probably thrivemarket.com probably um okay here was a common theme i'll kind of uh paraphrase because i got asked this question a lot um People wondering how to approach a situation where your current boyfriend is liking photos of other girls on Instagram. Uh oh. Oh, okay. So, so like some people were saying stuff like, I've told him I don't want him to, and he does it anyways and says it's just a photo. And then some people were like, I haven't really brought it up, but like, why is he liking these random girls' photos on Instagram? Like, is it just, is it, does it not matter? Am I crazy or should this bother me? Okay, I've had this experience happen to me, but on the other end. So she was liking all these guys' photos, like models, you know, like really, really good looking guys. That's besides the point, but just lots of good looking, hot, random guys. Okay. And I was like... So and she didn't know any of them personally? Some she did, some she didn't. I found out when I asked her about it. And she just denied saying, what's wrong with liking a photo? And which I completely agree with. There's nothing wrong with liking a photo. That's what Instagram is about, right? Liking stuff. And usually you spend 0 0.3 seconds on someone's picture. And you go, Doo -doo, like next one. Yeah, and yeah. It's gone from your memory. Right. But from my experience with this is, and what I eventually found out is just she was massively, massively insecure about herself. So she was liking these other guys' photos to basically get their attention. Because obviously when you like someone's photo, they'll either get a notification if you follow them or they can see that you've liked them. And if you're liking every single photo, chances are they'll probably eventually see your name come up, right? So it's a kind of, it's a weird kind of thing. Even if they never, even if they never recognize you, it is an attention thing. Like it's, it's a, it's a cry for attention. So you think I it's think. inappropriate in a relationship? I think so. Yeah. Like, like, no, but then this is where you, it, it depends on the relationship. Like, like if you, it's a slightly gray area. I don't think it's necessarily very black and white, right or wrong. Like if you were liking guys' photos who you knew, then that's cool. If you were liking guys' photos who you didn't know, I think that would also be cool. But if it was a load of like hot random dudes, I'd be like, it's a bit strange. Let me tell you something. I find, this is my personal opinion on it. If I met you, which I never like really went through your followers, but I know that like a lot of people do, like when they meet a guy, they're like, oh, red flags. He only follows a bunch of, follows a bunch of Instagram models, like, like posting thirst traps, like whatever. I'm like, okay, fair. So if I will say, if I met a guy and he followed a ton of Instagram thirst trap models, and then we developed a relationship and then we started dating and then I was his girlfriend and then he was still doing that and he never met any of these girls in his life. I would be like, we, for, yeah, for it's why odd behavior. though? Yeah. For why though? And I don't, and, and it's hard because you come across insecure by saying that, like maybe someone listening to you say that would be like, oh, he sounds like yeah, an insecure. Yeah, because I was, I was accused of being insecure. He sounds like an insecure yeah. dude, but like realistically it is just, I, I, I don't, I think it's, it's confusing and it's not, like you said, there's a gray area and I don't think you should like break up with someone because they're, but I think it's a conversation you could have and you could be like, can we find the deeper meaning? And, and of course, like 
most guys probably will try to gaslight you in this situation. Or look, listen, it's both ways as we just saw. But like gaslighting is not cool. Like it's just a fucking photo. It's not a big deal. But like yeah, it that, is, that's it's annoying. not a big deal. It is allowed to be said that it's odd behavior. Listen, people can do what they want on social media. But I think when you enter a relationship, there are certain parameters that you need to find yourself in. Find yourself in exactly, and then operate in. Equally, if you were like, if I found myself, I don't even if I was following, let's say, fifty hot supermodels on Instagram. I'm in a relationship with you. I wouldn't even like want to like their photos if that makes sense. Like it doesn't interest me. I think it's also a bit on the other side of this. I think it's odd when girls start dating a guy and they're like, unfollow all these girls you don't know. I'm that's, like, that's fucking that's weird. You should hope that he just wants to do it on his own. Like, r- like as he's scrolling, it will pause up. He's like, eh, why do I follow her anymore? I would hope it would happen organically. That's what that's what the end goal is to find a guy that maybe if he's following some Insta hoes. Then, like, as he sees their stuff while he's happy with you, he's like, why, wait, why do I still follow, you know, Veronica? Let me unfollow her. But, y- yeah, I think on both sides, it's weird to ask someone to, like, unfollow all these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, not like that. I just think understanding the motive as well. M- my my first question would be, like, what what are you gaining from liking a load of guys' photos? Like, does it make you feel seen? Does it Does it fulfill some kind of weird... It, fantasy i don't know you know like i it, think it, i think outside of saying the last part that seems a little abrasive i would just straight up ask yeah if you're if you are i would what is wrong with you no i think you should just be like what do you gain from this and if they gaslight you and say like nothing it's not a big deal it's just a photo be like it's not just a photo to me like well, if you, it is just a photo then it won't be so hard to stop liking them yeah yeah, yeah. if you value our relationship and it's making me upset just do this for me you're not losing out on anything right they don't even know you exist yeah hit them um, I think I think if you have asked someone already to stop doing this and they continue to do it and then gaslight you, that's grounds for like a serious conversation. It's grounds for arrest. For sure. Grounds for what? Arrest. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Hands behind your back. Okay. Um, I like the wait. I like these questions though. They're very I like. They're quite. They're very relatable. Yeah. Well, listen. Well done for picking them out. Um, no, I don't know why I hair flipped. Like I literally just like read the questions that these people asked and they were all really good. But so. you can tell like these questions are obviously coming from this must. Like that's happened to me. That's probably happened to loads of other people. Oh my God, yeah. I, I've dated a guy before. Like, not dated officially, but, like, been seeing a guy, and I'm like, oh, he sure follows a lot of blue check mark hotties that I don't think he's ever met before in his whole fucking life. Well, you're not one of the blue check mark hotties. Maybe I wasn't at the time. It took a while to get to be a blue check mark hottie. What? <laughs> blue check mark, blue check mark hottie. Hottie, yeah. It's quite the tongue twister. Hot, hottie, you forgot the T's, hottie. 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 Sounds daunting to even be one, I think. You know, you can buy a blue check mark now. Did you see this, producer Courtney? It's a m- membership on Instagram now or a subscription. You can pay $12 a month and have a blue check mark, which I find this interesting because I know a lot of influencers and like famous people that are going to be like up in arms. They're like, that's ridiculous. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> who fucking cares? Yeah. I like, I don't, <clears throat> like, if, if, okay. If, yeah. If Bradley, you know, 59 year old Bradley wants a blue tick, give him one. Well, sure. It's ticks. Yeah. Yeah, I just like I think I've already seen a lot of people be like, "This is so fucking stupid." Like, are you serious? And it's always coming from a blue check mark person saying that. And I'm like, calm down. When I I got my blue check mark after Barry Cavalieri, and I'm pretty sure I like applied for it. Asked someone like, "Is there a way to get this?" Like, I didn't get mine. Super honest. Like half these people that are up in arms about it are just pissed because they probably paid five hundred dollars to get the or blue check mark. they spent months asking Instagram to give them one. Yeah, I mean, I I I actively asked for it. I just didn't wake up one day being like, "Oh my god, look at that blue check mark." So I mean, I don't know um, if. Like, I don't think Brad Pitt's super fucking stressed about this. You know what I, I mean? So that's probably not a great example. Cause so I just mean like... Multi-million dollar actors don't really use Instagram. <laughs> no, I just mean like if you're upset about other people getting blue ticks, it, like that's weird. Like just let f- f- people have their fucking blue ticks. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Um, why did I go there? Oh, okay. The next question is how to fight in a healthy way. Let me ask y'all a question that I already know the answer to. So picture this. You wake up and something's wrong with you. You have an odd ache, a weird pain somewhere, maybe a mark or a spot shows up, and you immediately do what? Call your doctor? Eh. No. I know exactly what y'all do because I used to do it too. And that is instantly go to Google and type in your symptoms, which usually lead us to think that we have roughly two weeks to live and that we need to get all of our affairs in order. And don't even get me started on this new TikTok medical rabbit hole because I have found myself in it before and it's a scary place. It is a whole new level. Now, I can assure you, you're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice on Google, your BFF group chat, or TikTok. But you can find it on ZocDoc. 
ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance and are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and you're just trying to hold it together, finding great care should not take up all your energy. This actually happened to me the last time I had the flu. I was literally on my deathbed and legit, I was crying and calling my mom and I was trying to find medical professional to help. It just should not be that hard. That is why myself and millions of people use ZocDoc's free app to find and book doctors in their neighborhood whose patient reviewed fits their needs and their schedule just right. No more doctor roulette trying to find the right person who can help you. Book an appointment in their free app with a few taps and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash probably and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within even 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash probably. ZocDoc.com slash probably. Okay, here are my, I'd say... I'm doing this thing where I try to let you talk first, so then it's less aggressive for me to interrupt you, which I know I just did. But like, that's why there's been long pauses. We'll probably have to ask producer recording to edit this out. No, I think I, I surely people understand that that we need time to think. No time to think. <laughs> Rapid fire <laughs> questions. That is sometimes how I feel. I'm like, <laughs> um, first of all, I think definitely do not come across as uh, like at- attacking or um, or or aggressive, kind of you know. Putting the person down because that immediately is going to warrant a, a, a very defensive response. I, I think, as I mentioned a bit earlier, it's all about expressing how you feel and how whatever situation is is making you feel, and then maybe an observation of your partner's, you know, characteristics or whatever they're doing that's making you feel like that. So you're kind of almost saying, not you're wrong. This needs to change, or else. But this is how it makes me feel, and I don't like the way that you're doing it or going about it bit like our uh, chat in the kitchen last night. Yeah, I was going to say, I can answer it by just giving an example from last night. We had like, it's hard because I wouldn't call it a fight. I feel like you don't need to it like. It wasn't a fight. It's hard because like, if you are fighting healthy, then you almost, when they're all said and done, you're like, that wasn't a fight. That was a discussion. No, trust me, argument. that was not. I've had fights with exes. Yeah. And I have, actually, I don't really fight that much with exes. But I've like, had fights with exes. I don't like, I don't think you should be fighting like or maybe people are using the word fight. maybe someone would call it what we did in the kitchen last night a fight yeah, like maybe, maybe would think people would laugh and be like that was a nice conversation yeah. yeah that was an argument i mean yeah there there are people that are a lot more volatile that i know fight and like i don't ever want to do that with a partner but yeah um yeah we were basically cooking and he was trying to do something with sweet potatoes and i was like here just let me do it and i grabbed it and he was like okay you for I, i'll be honest he was like, okay, why don't you just do it? And he walked away. And I was like, wait, don't walk away. Let's talk about this. What are you, what, what, why are you walking away over sweet potatoes? He's like, it's not just, it's not just sweet potatoes. I'm like, sorry, I'm laughing because there's this episode from Vanderpump Rules, which I know you've never watched, where they get in this giant fight and the guy's like, it's not about the pasta. He's actually English too. He's like, it's not about the pasta. Um, anyways, yeah, it was. He was like, it's not about the sweet potatoes. He's like, you do this a lot. Like, you, you like really need to, which I self, you know, admittedly, I am very controlling of myself. And I try not to be with my friends and partners, but I guess it sometimes just comes out. And so he's like, a lot of the times in our life and in relationships, you just try to like grab something and just do it your way. You're like, I'll just do this, which I'm like, yeah, I do kind of do that. So we had like a very constructive conversation about it. But to be fair, when the conversation was done, I was like, well, also I don't want, and I kept bringing it. He's like, why are you circling back? We already talked about this, but I didn't, you know what? I think this is good because someone asked me like, Someone said I fight with my boyfriend or husband or whatever it was. And they were saying, well, we're done. I'm stewing. I'm still pissed. I keep just like replaying the fight in my head. I'm like, so that wasn't resolved then. If you're stewing when we were done, I, I wasn't stewing anymore. I was happy. We came over and gave each other a hug and kiss. Like if you're still stewing after a fight, the fight or argument is not done yet. You need to revisit it because you should not be stewing. And I kept revisiting it. And you were like, we're, we're literally saying the same thing. And I'm like, no. And I asked another question about something. And you're like, no. And you I think, reassured me. You were me. revisiting it because you just, I think we're still trying to get clarity and confirmation of, of what it is that you were doing wrong. Almost in a way to like make sure that it's Yeah, it I was, was like, I'm, I'm a little worried that I'm going to keep doing what you're asking me not to do. And he was like, no, like if you could just consciously try to be less like, you know, hands in grabbing stuff whenever I'm doing it and like, just like let me do something if I'm doing it. And I was like, okay. So just to revisit really quick. So something like that. And he was like, okay. And you've already done it like today when I was, when I was um, 
doing something in the kitchen and you're about to interject, you stood back and went, can I help? And I went, yeah, you can. Oh, See, yeah. That, but you've always, like, I that's something that effort. was like, that was not, that was good. That was like a, a, a step forward. It was really painful trying to watch you get the bread out of the bag. So <laughs> I was like, here, let me. I also, I was struggling. And I was like, wait, do you need help? <laughs> Just to go back onto the initial point. So, but the way I, the, and, I and again, I'm not saying I'm perfect and no relationships are ever going to be perfect and you're never going to give a perfect delivery and have perfect conversations. No. And I think fighting is healthy. I think couples who don't fight don't have any passion for each other. You learn a lot about each other 100%. when you argue and when you fight. And, and I, I don't think the goal is to be perfect. I think the goal is just to make each other aware of things that piss you off and annoy you and then just try and do it work less. on yourself and, and become better, a better person. If you believe in monogamy and you really do believe in being with one person for the rest of your life, right? That's fucking hard. Yeah. Like being with the same person for the rest of your life, you have to fucking work at it. I know you and I haven't been dating long enough to really give like like really intense like marital advice or anything but like if you want to be with someone you really have to work on it every day and that comes in the form of arguments of conversations that are annoying of someone being like that annoys me that you do that and me being like what i'm always just trying to help and then you'd be like but it doesn't come across that way it comes across like you're taking it away from me. you're controlling it's like demasculating and i'm like oh okay and these these conversations help you grow as a couple it's hard it, like i said it's easy to break up, date a new person, and continuously be in that one to two year honeymoon phase. Mm -hmm. It's easy to do that. But to have longevity in relationships, it requires work and working on it every day and arguing about stuff. I think a big realization for me was also my ego because <clears throat> I have a big ego and I, I know that controlling it and, and basically s submitting it when we're having conversations like this is so important because in the past, in previous relationships, my ego, as with everyone, tries to protect you from being hurt or being wrong or whatever it is and you have to just like push your ego aside and almost like ground yourself into i think it's i think it's just uh what's the word uh, just being self-aware and understanding that you're not perfect and you might also have things to work on um you just don't i just don't i think things that you don't want to do is you don't want to gaslight your partner you don't want to make them feel like they're in the wrong and that they're the one who's you know, being a lunatic because they're bringing something up and, and row, like rally them up because... If your partner's bringing up something that upsets them, it probably took a lot of courage for them to say that and like, like, because it can be awkward to like bring up something like that. So don't then make them feel bad by being like, I mean, I don't know why you feel that way, but I guess, okay. It's like, that's not... I think a big one as well is this happened when we were in the car driving and admittedly you were on your phone a little bit more than I liked being a passenger seat in a car. Oh, it's fair. Okay, and, text and, and, and and then I said, Shan, please, can you can you do this texting like when you finish driving? Just because, you know, it's just, I just feel a bit safer that way. And the first thing Shannon said was, will you text and drive? <laughs> and I said, well, that's not what I'm talking about. I probably have done, but this is about you. So that my point there is, yeah. don't then deflect it back on your partner, what they've done elsewhere. And also don't jump around arguments. If you're arguing about, you know, letting me cook in the sweet potatoes... And being controlling don't bring up the fact that i then you know was snoring last night and kept you up all night you know like keep it keep it yeah yeah to the point because no, that's that very sense. easy i've done that before in the past as well with 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 well that's the ego because like i don't want to be wrong so i'm like well you also do that yeah. you're like cool so we're both or just, just being gonna... like well you did this well what about three days ago when you did this and it's just entire and then you then you just go down little rabbit holes yeah then that's not healthy yeah. hmm. okay so i think fighting in a healthy way is all about being communicative and then just knowing that it's okay to fight People get so stressed about like arguments and stuff. And I'm like, it's okay to have arguments and to, like I said, I don't really like calling them fights, but like if you want it, to, it's, it's going to happen. They're essentially lessons. Yeah. And you look, like I said, you learn from every single fight, you learn something. So yeah. Okay. I get asked this question a lot and it's actually, it was all from the girls it, saying how to handle having a bigger sex drive than your boyfriend or like let's just make it blanket statement having a bigger sex drive or a different let's just say different a different sex drive than your partner how do you handle that i don't really um i don't really know how to how to answer it so maybe you have an answer what would you do so essentially just one person's much hornier than the other i guess so i mean that happens yeah I, I think it probably happens later on more so in life. Like actually you have kids and you got all these, like everyone's running a million miles a minute. Okay, that's when I read this book once um, about this kind of thing, like sex drives. And, and remember I mentioned to you about like it, it, it accelerators and decelerators. So a big, okay. So as an example, like if you're married and you have kids and they're kind of, you know, 
you're 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 going upstairs and you're you're about to have sex, whatever, and and you hear kids running around downstairs screaming, and or you're a bit stressed out because you know you've got to answer an email. These are all decelerators. These are all things that make it much harder to to have sex and 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 get and get in the mood for sex, right? So you basically want to eliminate as many decelerators as you can, and you want to increase the accelerators. So accelerators could could be things like mood lighting, quietness. Um, uh you know music music not 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 thinking about you know t- closing your laptop turning off your phone so it doesn't ring all these kinds of things that's to help i guess both people have time to because you have to make time for sex particularly i mean we don't know but i'm i imagine if you've got kids and you're married and yeah. a hundred things going on you it's almost like it's it's something you have to put into your day i was gonna say people make jokes about scheduling things when you have kids but it's almost like yeah well like if you have kids and responsibilities and all these things you can't just rip each other's clothes off whenever you feel like it. You do almost yeah. have to schedule sex, I'm sure. Like, again, we don't have kids, but, like, it's not... People make it sound like a bad thing. Like, oh, you just... I don't ever want to be scheduling sex. Well, it's like, sometimes well, but, you like, do have to, you, yeah. you have a yeah. life. You have responsibilities. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but then, in so that brings me on to the point. If, if one of you is more, I guess, of an accelerator than, than the other person, um, I think that's, again, just just trying to find a middle ground you know it's very difficult to have sex with someone who just doesn't want to have sex but then i think that's just talking to them about your desires and your needs and saying look i like i this is this is how i show my love for you and this is what i want to be doing with you you know can you can you meet me halfway can you you know suck my toes or do something maybe whatever you're into no kink shaming here um maybe because you just brought this up the accelerators and the decelerators maybe you don't realize it i'm talking to the people asking this question but like your significant other being on tiktok or like being on their phone right before bed or like watching a tv show maybe you could like start trying to introduce like you said like putting the lights dim and just being like let's just like lay here and like talk for a second and then like they're less distracted by like tiktok and all these things that make you be like i'm not in the mood i'm overstimulated by my phone i don't really feel like having sex right now yeah and also but also sex doesn't have to be full on going the full full rounds for like half an hour and you're both like exhausted and sweating at the end of it sex can just be like kissing it could just be a bit of foreplay you know people think sex is is two people having to come or at least one person having to come and then that's the biggest thing sex doesn't sex is just an intimate period between you and your partner on whatever level that is it doesn't always have to be the big shebang a little blowjob here and there, you know? Okay. Well, I think that's a personal I preference. Yeah, my mom listens to this. Yeah, what? <laughs> yeah, maybe honestly, if you have a bigger sexual, well, then people are going to be like, what do I get in return? That's yeah, fair. But, then I guess, but then I guess on a deeper level, if your partner is just not sexually satisfying you, that's a bigger problem. Yeah. That there's, deeper, there's a deeper, deeper issue there. Yeah, that's true. Which I'm not qualified to talk about. Me either. Guys, the way I am so jazzed about this company. Okay, so if you have followed me at all, in the last three years, you know, I am beyond obsessed with first leaf wine. Like I honestly won't shut up about them. I found them randomly a while back and they have continued to impress me. They literally always have the best deals. So let me break it down for y'all. First leaf is amazing. If you love wine, me, I love wine, but also you don't like really know the ins and outs. Like I don't know enough about it, but I know what tastes I like and what tastes I don't like, but then I'm not able to apply that to like a list of wines and types and regions and all that fancy stuff. I like clam up. I just don't know when I'm in the grocery store, I get so overwhelmed. So First Leaf does that for you. They take the guesswork out of the wine selection with a super easy and short taste quiz. Then, furthermore, when you get your first wines, you rate the ones they sent you, and then they have an even better understanding. It's like 96% proven accuracy. And honestly, for me, it's 100% personally because I have loved every single wine they have sent me. It also comes straight to your door, which is amazing because y'all know I do not like to go to the grocery store. And you can pick when it arrives, too. I love trying these wines from South Africa, New Zealand, like more than just California wines, even though those are good too, but it's so nice because First Leaf really lets you explore so many different types. I feel honestly so cultured. And by the way, the wines are nice. It's not some weird gimmick where you get a bunch of low budget wine. These are high quality wines that are just a fraction of the price. I cannot honestly say enough good stuff about them. I just love First Leaf so, so much. I've gotten all my friends on it, my mom on it, my grandma on it, you name it. I'm like, you need to try First Leaf. Trust me. This is like, it's an ad, but it's like not because I just love them so much. So you might be tired of hearing me rave about it, but I am not. You are crazy not to try them out. I just legit love them. So 
Here's the deal. Sign up today. You'll get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. So go to tryfirstleaf.com slash probably. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash probably to get your first six bottles for $39.95 plus free shipping. Tryfirstleaf.com slash probably. Thoughts on ghosting. Like in what situation? Do you guys have that term? Ghosting? Yeah, when you just ignore someone. Yeah. What are your thoughts? Like, what are your... If you get ghosted. Like, I think if people were just basically asking, like... Well, I was just curious. I know what your thoughts on ghosting are. I'm sure you're like, that's fucked up. But I think, like, like how to handle being ghosted. Know your worth. Like, yeah. you are the prize. I say this to... I've, I've said this on, on my own car, podcast when I was talking about relationships. You you have to go into dating like you are the prize. You are number one. They are here because you are the bomb. Right. If this person is is has ghosted you after a date or two dates or whatever, fuck them. Like like that's their loss. You 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 you've got to value yourself. You can't be if someone's ghosted you. There are millions of people, billions of people out there who would love you for you and do anything to have your attention. If some dude or some guy or some girls ghosted you, fuck, that, fuck them. Well, I read this book uh, by Nick Vile that was basically talking about first date. Well, it's talking about a lot of stuff about sex and relationships, but it was saying that um, when you go on a first date, stop trying to get the person to like you, which I totally used to do that on first dates. I'm like, okay, will he like me? Will he like me? Will he like me? And start deciding if you like him. Like, spend the time being like, do, do I like him? Because if he likes you or if you're just being yourself, he's either going to like you or not like you. So like if you start actually putting time and effort into deciding if you like him, half the time you're like, I'm actually not even into this guy. I mean, it's happened to me before so many times where I've gotten ghosted and it's a guy that I didn't even have interest in like having a second date with, but he didn't call me again. I'm like, did you just ghost me? And then yeah. I get fixated on it. Because then you start looking at what's wrong with me. Like yeah. what have I done? But it's not you. It's yeah. them. And it's and I fixate on it and it's like such it's so counterproductive. It's so it doesn't do anything for you because I wasn't even into this guy but then because he doesn't talk to me. It's like classic female behavior for some of us out here, myself included, where you're just like, wait now. And it's it's the phrase I got asked this a lot too. Have you heard the phrase that girls are using called or it's like if he wanted to, he would. Mm -hmm. Like if he wanted to, he would. If he if he wants to call you again, he will. If he if he wanted to hang out with you, he would. So you getting ghosted, it's not really a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them and what they're into. And yes, it might be a little hurtful at the time to think like, I guess I'm not what he's into. But if you go down some scribbling rabbit hole of like, well, what is he into? It's not you. How many times do I think people have been like, I'm not into, it could have been yeah, my yeah. red hair. Like it could have been yeah. anything in life. You're not, you're not the puzzle. You're not the last piece trying to fit into his puzzle. Like you're the freaking puzzle. Yeah. And another thing, if they're ghosting you, don't, it, it, don't think, oh, they're, they're, they're busy or maybe they're just this. People have their phones in their hands for eight hours a day. Well, that's like, the, that's, if he wanted to, he would. That's exactly. where that comes that's into. That's just like, he's not talking to you for a reason. Yeah. And there's a lot of times people will make like, oh, and I've done this before. And I've talked about it on other, other podcasts before, like where I'm like, okay, well, he's busy. Well, he's got a really stressful job. So no, if he wanted to, he would. And I didn't come up with that phrase. I'm not going to, you know, get in trouble over here. I don't know who started that thing. Since don't want to get blocked, tell it again. But like, if he wanted to, he fucking would. He just would. If he... This one travels across the, I'm not trying to brag here, but he literally flies across the country because if he wanted to, he would. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you want to make something work, you can. I think the sad reality is, though, with dating these days is it's more about like an attention competition rather than like a trust competition. I feel like with all these dating apps and stuff, it's literally a game of whose attention can I keep for the longest rather yeah. than who is someone I can build trust with and actually build a relationship with. It's sad because there's a lot of people out there who are genuinely looking for good connections with people and there's just a lot of people who are trying to lead on as many people as they can for their own ego. Right, which I do think you see that a lot more on dating apps where people are like, I just want to see how many like matches or like texts I can have because I want to be distracted versus like actually looking to maintain a serious relationship. And I, I think dating apps... Look, I know lots of people, as I'm sure lots of people listening to this podcast, have met their significant other on a dating app and have an amazing relationship, Gone amazing to countless family. Countless weddings, yeah, right, of course. But then on the flip side of that, it's a very toxic environment for a lot of people, and I truly believe that it's just not a natural way to to to, to meet someone in that kind of environment with that label on its head. And it's like, even I've been on dates, obviously before you, where <laughs> I don't know one would help. <laughs> Where, One would hope. Well, I turned up and there was this like expectation that we should, we should hook up straight away and we should be a nice and, 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 you know, are they the right person for me? Will I marry this person? And I think people forget that the whole point of dating is you are 
basically making a making friends before you go into the romantic stage yeah. you are you want to be friends with someone before you go into that stage of like you know let's hook up and 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 the, the romantic side of things right yeah i agree what are your thoughts on taking an ex back i have a pretty hard line on it but very few occasions i've heard of where it's actually worked out and even when it has there's there's just always problems so for me it's a kind of an ex for a reason yeah, I think, you know, it, I think it makes sense in certain situations. In situations where I'm like, anytime a kid's involved, I'm always going to be like, I hope you guys make it work. Like, I really, I'm rooting for you guys to figure it out and make it work. And and that's just really specific that I'm saying that. And I don't have any examples. But I guess when, when situations are like that or like a marriage, because I take marriage so serious, I think it's such a big deal. I'm like always rooting for someone, right? Now, I'm not rooting for anyone staying in a toxic marriage just because you have a ring on your finger. Get out if you need to get out. But I I really think as far as dating goes, like like people our age and dating, I don't think we should be going back to the milk we took out of the fridge and that's spoiled now. I just don't think it's it's you've tried it didn't work unless you have like a really 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 good reason then like you said it gets sticky because you're like what were you doing when we weren't together it's like hard to like yeah especially if it's if you've broken up because you've cheated there's been someone's cheated on the other that i think that for me is that's case a no closed. that's a case closed that i've never seen that getting better no um, yeah but i even know people that have gone back with their ex who cheats on them and then they are the ends up they end up cheating on them because so it's like just, get even yeah it's just it's it's a nightmare it's volatile yeah i just think i think x ex, x's are x's for a reason i personally think you'd have to you'd have to give me a bang up reason that you're getting back together with your ex for me not to be like why the fuck there's so many i know it's so stupid to say there's so many fish in the sea but like you get so hung up on memories and times with this other person you forget the all the amazing things you could create with someone else yeah and you just don't know because you haven't like broken up with him in your mind yet like you have to yeah, really like yeah. sever ties completely it's that thing in your head with it with an ex the reason why it's so hard to get over people is because you have this constant vision of what could have been but the reality is was that nothing could have been because it hasn't been and it right. isn't going to be and that's the that's the process it's like trauma like getting over an ex is like getting over they've said it's similar to getting over someone who's died yeah but it's like a, it's like a grieving process right yeah i think specifically you should just just try for try try to find that magic yeah, with look someone for better. else it goes back to the thing of, of you know you're the prize so you should be with someone who's amazing i get it though because when i when me and my ex broke up i basically was like devastated at the idea of dating again i was like i can't do that it was just so nice to have someone and to yeah. not have to work for it like i was like dating sounds daunting like all i see on instagram i've been in a relationship for three and a half years and all i've seen is how horrible dating is in Nashville and how horrible everything is because, you know, everyone likes to make fun of dating and, and, and like the world we live in now. But realistically, when I started like dating, when I met you, like it's you forget the fun of dating, like dating. And once you actually find someone that you really, really like, it's those beginning steps. And yes, the honeymoon phase is like glorious and so fun. And you that's what makes you be like, oh, I literally forgot about what's the same because you just are having so much fun in this new relationship. You just have to you have to actually sever ties from the old one and give the new one a try so i think if you're like wanting to get back together with your ex think if you're actually just like not severing ties yet you need to do that Add, adding to that i think with dating as well you know when it's good when no one's playing any games people are, you're just being honest with each other about how you feel you're excited to see each other there's no all oh, they text me first so i'm gonna wait two hours to text them back and then it's before us none of that bullshit you know none of this like oh i booked dinner this time so now it's your turn it's just it should just be so natural and flowing and fun and and no games or or bullshit like and and again like <clears throat> i've been in situations where dating has been a challenge and i'm like why is this so hard it's because they're not the right person for you right it should just be so easy and natural so true i agree it should not be especially in the beginning it should not be so difficult it should be free-flowing so if someone wants some advice we can have dating about um making the first move as a girl what do you guys like what is weird what is not weird oh i i think if it if a girl makes the first move i think that's awesome i think that's great i i think we're so far gone from this society of you know a man has to go up to the woman and and ask her for her number and that's the only way and and it annoys me because in london i see it all the all the time i see these women who are sitting there almost expecting men to come up to them and that's the way they're going to date i'm like if you see someone who you like and you're it doesn't matter man or woman go up to them and tell them you like them and, and that you, happens and you in wanna... america too yeah fine well probably all over the world but i just observe it in london a lot 
no I, I i i hate that and you know if you if you see a hot guy go up to the hot guy like i'm sure he'll love that and if he thinks it's weird that you've approached him then then not he's the right not guy the right guy yeah 100 percent. Yeah? okay what about um the difference between this is a pretty specific one but someone was like what's the difference between english and american girls are we this one says are we really that forward <laughs> do you think we're more forward yeah yeah definitely do you like that yeah i do you, yeah you I like do. that i'm a bit yeah, you but like I, that? I, mean, I guess i go i go a little bit against my own culture here but but honestly dating when i was dating you and um it was just so much more enjoyable. I just, I find, and again, this isn't all Think English. Think that's a me thing or an American thing? No, no, I, no, because I can, I can kind of get a sense, like just from me and your friends and stuff. You, I mean, obviously, I've got some outgoing friends, and this is, I don't want English girls to get offended because it's not all English girls, but generally speaking, English girls are a lot more reserved. Yeah. They are. They, they, Aren't they. Aren't English as a whole more reserved? So, yeah, one hundred percent. You laugh about the kiss. You were like, imagine the kiss cam in London, in England. Yeah, I'd be like, hey, go, darling, put a kiss on camera. Hey, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Give me a kiss on the cheek. Yeah, I think, I think, but I think your culture generally is just more forward. Yeah. I think okay. it's just a, it's a it's a general culture thing, and that probably infiltrates into the the, the dating, dating scene. Yeah. Okay, what do you think about someone trying to? Well, these questions actually got back in January, so this is dry January. But let's just say not trying to drink at all. What do you think about someone who's surrounded by people that are peer pressuring them and they're really trying to not drink during like dry January or something? Change your environment. Completely. Change your environment. Yeah, change your environment. I think I had this question the other day because I've massively cut back from drinking over the past six months. And there are times where I'm also with people and I feel this pressure to, to drink, particularly when everyone's like, oh, what are you drinking? You're going to have a drink? You're going to drink? And I'm like, oh, I just want a non alcoholic beer and everyone's leave me alone. But, but. If people are really making you feel bad for not drinking, then don't stop hanging out with them. That's the sad reality of it, though. Yeah, I mean, it is. Oh, it is. What did you say about alcohol? It's the only drug that people think you're weird if you don't do it. Yeah, it's the only drug in the world if you don't do it. If you said, if I said to you, okay, Shannon, you know, I'm going to I'm going to try and stop, you know, sniffing cocaine every weekend for the next six months. You'd be like, that's that's really good. That's an amazing (laughs) thing. If I said to you, babe, I'm not going to drink for six months not you in general but not you specifically but people be like what why are you, are you okay are you pregnant uh, you know? i would yeah i would say even it's, why it's, it's nuts it's not what about this what about this as well i don't know if you have this in america but in england we have these things called bottomless brunches where you go we definitely have those in america they might have they might have started here i venture to say right you go and it's advertised that you have to drink as much as possible in two hours like it's, if, it's not advertised like that they are it's pretty much as unlimited prosecco so for two hours bottomless that's yeah, up to your perception it, yeah but imagine if it was like okay right guys you know here's here's two grams of cocaine try and finish it all in two hours it just people would be like are you mental but because it's alcohol it's just like it's normal it's so messed up yeah i do see a lot of girls puking in bushes after bottomless mimosas in nashville like you know it's just it just it's nuts to me like now my close friendship group they they respect the fact that i don't drink they don't care they don't ask me they don't probe me i just say i want a diet coke or sparkling water and i've got a beer and they're like cool like what does everyone else want when i was younger i might have been like oh my god really seriously but now that i'm older if my friends were like oh i'm good like honestly taylor not just when she's pregnant but like taylor's wasn't always like a big drinker at dinner i'd always want a glass of wine at dinner or a drink at dinner and she'd be like it's kind of just eating and i would be like Oh, okay like i wasn't like no if i'm drinking you're drinking but the people who are like that it's often because it's their own insecurity of you know the amount of alcohol they drink so they they want to they want to bring you on that path with them so I, I would honestly say it is quite difficult but you just need to hang around with with different people it's the easiest it's the easiest option and if, if some of those people are your best friends and they're peer pressuring you then maybe you need to reevaluate your friendship friendships groups. yeah i agree um or it's like, it just feels really immature to be like, come on bro it's like relax yeah um okay long-term boyfriend of eight years um we've been living together for four and he won't talk about marriage thoughts <laughs> my personal thoughts are if you are personally wanting to get married that's a problem that's yeah. that's a long time that's like what is it is it is it maybe it's uh i a, imagine maybe she... it's an, an irrational commitment issue from his side Maybe I imagine she's brought it up. I would. It doesn't say it here, but I imagine she's brought up marriage. And in that case, like someone's not going to change. If y'all been together for eight years, living together for four, you're just playing house at this point. And there are so many relationships that that is okay. And people all over the world aren't getting married, but want to be partners for life. And that is so okay. But if marriage is truly something that you're 
looking forward to and you want, I'd say you already put eight years in and it doesn't seem like it's going to change. You might want to get out. And I, I say that lightly, like scoot on out. Listen, I fucking well, know. It, it depends how much, it depends how much <clears throat> you value marriage to how much you value your relationship. If he doesn't want to get married because he doesn't, for whatever reason it may be, it, I'm, I'm guessing it's got to be a pretty good one, but not everyone wants to get married, right? So actually it doesn't. But if, if, if he just really doesn't want to get married and you really do, that's going to be a thing. But if you're kind of okay with not getting married, then you can see it. But, but again, just ask him. Just say, yeah. look, it is one of my dreams to get married and you are the man I want to marry. But it's, yeah, you have to have these conversations because like you don't want to, I don't want to say waste your time because I'm sure you're enjoying being with him. But like if it's your end goal to be married, then you don't want to be with someone whose end goal is not also to be married. It's like, People that ask someone if they want kids and they say no, and then they still stay together and they're like, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And then it comes time to have kids and they're like, I told you I didn't want kids. And it's like- It just almost gets worse. Yeah, you have to, like, if you, those are big deals. Marriage and children, big deals. If you know for 100% that that person doesn't want to do it, then he's not your person. If that is something that you feel very strongly about, having kids, getting married, like either or, both of them, whatever, like you need to be with the wrong person. that, that, That is a tough- that's tough. That's a tough situation, but but that's also a tough conversation that needs to be had. Because you don't want to resent someone and be like, oh, I always wanted to get married and we never got married. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't want to resent someone. Yeah, because that is what would happen. Yeah. Okay, James says no to porn. What is his take on masturbating? Wanking. Wanking. Um, I think, yeah, master- masturbation is healthy. I mean, there's a lot of people that say, particularly from a guy's perspective, that semen retention is really healthy for you. I don't really know. I need to read more about that. God, please don't. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, it, it, it's it's just like you're keeping your testosterone in. I guess so. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. But no, I think I think mast- masturbation's fine if you're using your imagination and and it's coming from a natural, you know, a, a natural feeling inside you rather than something artificially. Yeah, someone said that their boyfriend wants to stop watching porn, but he doesn't know how. Do you have any like? quick we don't have to like go into a whole just, thing you just gotta go cold turkey man cold turkey it's like if, especially i find the environments that you'd probably want to do it in is obviously when you're in your house alone by yourself so maybe if you do work at home try and go and work in coffee shops so you can't just whack your cock out and have one <laughs> um <laughs> so i don't know about i don't know about england but you cannot do that in these coffee shops <laughs> no i I I don't yeah it's it's literally just just cold turkey but the the thing that helped me the most is okay I've 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 done it one day I can do another day and then it was like that and then it was like right I've come this far I'm not going to ruin it no pun intended and then <laughs> if I'm gonna and then if I am gonna do it I'm gonna do it off my own accord you're gonna do like if you are gonna masturbate you would do it with your own imagination I'll do it with my imagination yeah yeah strip it back down to basics baby you still have to be able to look at your iPhone. You just have to, you know what I mean? Like, you used to not have our iPhones right here to watch porn so readily available. Yeah. And just block block porn websites from your laptop. Just just block them. Just make it Because then it's it like hard. one more step you'd have to take. And then if you find yourself unblocking something, you're like, okay, I feel a bit silly doing this. Like, And also, I think it's this thing as well of like, if you if you have that urge and you feel the need to, to, to do that, and it can be like either because you're stressed or you're bored or you're wanting to feel that surge of dopamine, which is what you get from, from doing it, just think about, doing something else that's going to bring you some kind of dopamine rush and i know it sounds silly because it's nowhere near as high but that's the point but like just go outside and go for a 10 minute walk or go put on some music and and you know have a little boogie i don't know these sound silly but they're, they're true because as soon as you get into this habit of oh i feel like shit i need a dopamine kick watching porn boom it's just going to keep frying them and just make ordinary normal things like going for a walk and listening to music very mundane and boring right i mean i find getting in my car and going for a little spin around the block and blaring some music to be absolutely exhilarating did you so, did you watch porn before me yeah you did yeah yeah and i was always the girl that was like um oh i don't care if my boyfriend watches porn like oh i don't care i'm so cool oh my god we should watch it together like i'm so cool i'm like so cool i could just die like i always wanted to be the cool girl you know but i was you know if i had a boyfriend that watch it so often that when we would go to have sex he'd be like oh sorry babe i like watch porn this morning like i can't and i'd be like oh okay like it was me in in competition with the porn at that point and like i still was like oh yeah it's okay wait have you has that happened to you yeah yeah it was a boyfriend date and yeah and he and and i just remember i only brought it up to like taylor and she was like that's fucking weird that's a problem and i was like but i was so hell-bent on him not thinking i was like nagging or like uh, like like girlfriend the, be- the people pleaser yeah i just like was so obsessed with wanting him to think i was like 
so cool. But in that relationship, I always was trying to be someone I wasn't. What so. if you met me and I was like, I want to watch porn together with you? I know you really changed my perspective on it. I probably would have been like, cool. Like I was really like always trying to please the the male in the situation, and I was like, yeah. I mean, it wasn't something that I like actively wanted to do, but I just genuinely was like, okay, cool. We can make this fun and sexy and whatever because I was. But when you explain porn the way you explain porn, which is basically just like this artificial rush of dopamine and this like it it totally skews the males outlook on on women like on sex and women it does massively sex. like i like it genuinely made me i look back now when i was watching loads of porn and having sex it made it so meaningless it made it like a performance um if, if real sex wasn't as good as watching porn it was just so messed up in so many ways yeah and i also just like as a woman like i know the girls that are in absolutely no shade to these porn stars but like i can't compete with that i can compete with like their bodies their boobs their vaginas like i can't compete with the acrobatics they can do like i just can't so it was always making me feel bad when i would even just watch porn on my own i'd be like i would know i will i'll never look like that during sex so like yeah it was just like overall not healthy and when you explained it the way you did and then it talked about how like you used to be so obsessed with watching it, and then you kind of just like completely stopped and started looking into what it was doing to you personally what it was doing to your relationships what it was doing to your view of women i mean yeah, I definitely have. I, I'm a steak. I flipped. Yeah, I flipped. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. And 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 some guys have said to me, "Oh, but you know, you know that that's weird. Like, surely, like you know, a little bit of porn is fine. No, honestly, like none is 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 best. It's it's that simple." Cool. Well, I feel like that's a good part to wrap it up. Also, we're at 55 minutes, so you know, we got we got to wrap it up anyways because we just be talking too long. I tried to not interrupt. I think it made the podcast longer. I tried to talk slower. I think it made the podcast longer. <laughs> Are you guys into this or what? You're going to have to fucking press 1.5 on my ass. No, I like that. That, I, that was, I enjoyed that. Did you? Yeah. I, I enjoy I, you. I got I got a chance to to speak, a little hand connection. Ha- oh, you mean, I thought you meant you enjoyed the podcast. You enjoyed me not interrupting and talking slower? Okay, fair. No, that was quite nice as well. Maybe when we have our formal conversations, like when we have those little fights, we can sit down and do it podcast mode. So it, that, But that's actually another point. Just... Just quickly. We're at 55 minutes, babe. Robert. La- la- last one. You you, you got to let each other speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely I definitely think I do that well when we argue. Yeah, I'm in a different yeah, headspace yeah. than when I'm on a podcast yeah, just shooting the shit with my buddies. You do. You okay. Do. But I also like it when you talk a million miles an hour. Thanks. Okay, guys. Well, welcome to Robert. I'm just kidding. Thanks for tuning in. Love you. Mwah.